and now uh, we welcome Michael Mortkat to speak about the Tamari order for D3 and derivability in semi-associative lambic grishin calculus. Okay, so thanks for uh, suggesting this uh, conference to me. It's always nice to speak for a new uh, community. This talk will, will be actually on, on a linguistics uh, problem on the different degrees of uh, word order freedom as you find them in uh, natural languages. But the way we are going to approach the problem is via uh, formal language theory. So basically what we will be studying is two types of uh, uh, languages of uh, a higher dimensionality than usually considered. And the primary uh, uh, object of our study will be uh, uh, extended Dyke languages, uh, k-dimensional Dyke languages, which uh, consists of words over a k-letter alphabet, and that's what we will call the dimension of the uh, of the language. And the words are um, uh, satisfying two constraints. One is a multiplicity constraint. Uh, which uh, requires every word to contain the k letters with equal frequency. And the second is the prefix constraints, which uh, says that for every prefix of a word, the number of uh, uh, first uh, alphabet symbol is at least as much as that of the second alphabet symbol, et cetera, et cetera, to the final alphabet symbol. So our familiar language of uh, balanced brackets, the usually studied the Dyke language, would be the two-dimensional case or the two-letter the two letter. So that's one family of languages. And then the closest relative of these families of languages are so-called mixed languages, which one could say are, are just preserving the resource sensitivity of the Dyke language in the sense that they respect the multiplicity constraint, but that they drop the prefix constraint. So in these languages, there is equal uh, 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 During constraints on, uh, on these letters. Uh, so actually, I wrote a paper on, on these extended higher dimensional languages in the first year for, for Jim Lambic's uh, 90th birthday. Uh, here is some, some, so, some numbers uh, related to uh, small cardinalities of the, of the uh, uh, letter frequency and the dimensionality. Of course, what one does then is you generate these, these patterns, you have nice uh, sequences of uh, uh, integers. You go to the online integer sequence, Esclopedia, uh, 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 and here you find the, uh, you know, the, uh, the culprits for these sequences, which as usual gives you interesting ideas as to problems related to that. Now the problem has a little history because I gave this as a, as I say, as a talk and a paper for Jim, Jim's uh, 90th uh, uh, birthday. And I gave it as a challenge to my uh, uh, logic and language uh, students in, at Utrecht University. Students couldn't solve the challenge of the exact place of these extended Dyke languages in the Chomsky hierarchy. But uh, worse uh, than that, I couldn't solve it myself. So since uh, what is it, uh, 2014, this problem is with me. I promised myself not to think of it uh, uh, anymore, but then there's always people who make this uh, thing re, uh, uh, resurface, like Noam's, uh, Noam's suggestion to, to actually uh, contribute uh, a talk to this workshop. So here we are again with the extended tag language. Some form of linguistics. And the kind of patterns that you, uh, uh, that you find with these uh, 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 extended type language give you what is known in, in, in linguistics so-called uh, crossing dependencies. So uh, take the pattern, uh, the formal pattern, A to the N, B to the N, C to the N. This is typically a pattern that requires expressivity beyond context-free. Uh, you can apply the, you know, the pumping lemma for context-free languages to show that this goes beyond the context-free boundary. And it is a kind of pattern that you find in actually in natural languages. 
at least if Dutch is a natural language. Uh, so the example sentence that I give here, translated would be something like, he hopes that uh, John helps Mary to teach the kids how to ride a bicycle, but this complex sentence are grouped together at the end of the phrase. All the uh, complements of the verb, the subjects, the objects, etc., etc., are preceding a cluster of verbs. And the arcs in the little picture here are actually uh, capturing the semantic notion of who does what. So the, the young, the John here is doing the helping, the Mary is doing the teaching, and the kids are doing the, are doing, doing the cycle. Right? So this is a crossing dependency pattern. It's one of the patterns of the three letter and uh, the three letter uh, Dyke language, for example. Um, and since the 90s, more or less, the, 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 the feeling has been in, in formal linguistics that uh, what we would need for these patterns beyond context three would not be a jump to context sensitive languages, which are going to show many languages. But there is actually that there is actually an interesting class of so-called mildly context sensitive languages, uh, which were studied initially by Arvind uh, Joshi at uh, Penn University. And so he, he characterized this idea of what this family of mildly context sensitive languages is, namely the mildly context sensitive languages would properly include the context three languages. They would allow a bounded degree of uh, crossing dependencies of the type that I illustrate with the, uh, with the example, uh, example here. And the feeling is that this, this bound would actually be a low bound. So that's the reason that for the rest of the talk, I will be uh, concentrating on the three letter extended uh, languages. Um, and the most important thing for, 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 say for, for computational linguistics is that this jump beyond context three would still uh, uh, allow you to maintain the polynomial. Which of course for practical application uh, is, a, is a benefit that you don't want to lose. There's some other properties of this mildly context sensitive which are not directly relevant for the, for the talk, so I just, uh, I just skipped it. Okay, so that's the background of the whole thing. Um, now the conjecture, oh, let me show that, the conjecture actually is, conjecture by Makoto Kanazawa in personal conversation, is that the k-dimensional Dijk languages would be recognized by a k minus one multiple context three grammar. Now, what is this idea of a um, multiple context three grammar? Multiple context three uh, grammars are generalizing the familiar context three grammars to higher dimensionality in following sense. In a context three grammar, the non-terminals, of course, as we know, range over, uh, over strings. So the semantics of the uh, context, three, uh, context three languages tells us that. Now in a K multiple context three language, the non-terminals are ranging not over strings, but over string tuples with a maximal size of K. So if we say we have a two multiple context three grammar, we mean that there is certain rules in that grammar where uh, non-terminals in this particular instance here, in this particular example, it's a non-terminal A, where they range over uh, a pair of strings rather than just over strings, right? So an ordinary context three grammar in this perspective of the multiple context three grammars is just a one dimensional context three grammar. And the conjecture for the, for the three letter Dijk languages would then be that a two dimensional context three grammar would actually uh, suffice to, uh, uh, to recognize it. Just, just a question. Uh, yes. Could I ask? Sure. So is the multiple context free grammars, are they also poly no recognizable in polynomial yeah. time? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. So they, they, they remain polynomial, but, but they, they become closer and closer and closer to context free uh, as the dimensionality increases. Cl but closer now remember to what? that as closer the dimensionalities. To... To, uh, to context sensitive, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah. but they stay with it as a as a sub uh, sub family of languages that re uh, retain the, the polynomial parsing. Okay, so because we think this these crossing dependencies only uh, require a, a very low bound of crossing dependencies, uh, concentrating, for example, on the three letter Dijk languages, is probably enough. 
but it's a conjecture. It hasn't been, it hasn't been shown. Uh, and actually, coming up with an actual uh, two-dimensional context-free grammar for uh, the three-letter Dyck language has turned out to be a very elusive, uh, elusive affair. There is a paper by uh, Konstantinos Kokalidis and, and Orestes Melkonia where they uh, try to actually come up with a, a context, uh, multiple context-free grammar for a three-letter Dyck and where they develop, say, a, a theory of in, increasing abstractness of formulating these grammars, but the result is still, uh, is still elusive. You can turn to that paper and you also find uh, uh, interesting code going with it if you want to experiment with this, uh, uh, with this pattern. Uh, so, but what, can what I have we a want question? To do, yes, sure, of course. Uh, okay, so do you know any partial result about this conjecture for the case k larger than four? K larger than four. Uh, no, so, so the conjecture in, in, is, is, is completely over. We know that, we know that mm, the mixed language with three letters, so that's uh, uh, just equal multiplicity of the letters, but no ordering constraints. For that, the Kanazawa and uh, Salvati have proven that is that indeed this must be a two-dimensional multiple context-free uh, uh, language. But for the more restrictive case of, of uh, the three-letter dike, this is an open, an open conjecture. Of okay. course, we know that for two-letter uh, uh, alphabets, both the, uh, 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 the dike and the mixed case are context-free. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this is, yeah, that's kind of tantalizing. My approach is not going to be via the rewriting grammar, so via, via multiple context three grammars, but uh, it's going to be the logical approach via extended uh, lambic, uh, lambic grammars, actually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so now let's, let's look at some of these, uh, these uh, uh, bijections that you find when you look at the online uh, uh, integer sequence uh, encyclopedia. So one of the, the most, uh, I think, appealing uh, bijections is between uh, 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 k-dimensional Dyck languages and rectangular standard uh, young tableaus. Now, these young tableaus are mostly studied or used as, a, as an instrument in studying representation theory of the symmetric and general linear group. So you could wonder what have they, have they to do with linguistics. This is, I think this is a nice uh, application of the, of the tableau. So remember that a that, uh, young tableau starts from a partition of an in integer, of an integer n. So that would be a multiset of positive integers which uh, sum up to, uh, to n. And what we do is we list the, the k parts of such a partition in a weakly decreasing order. Little warning here, uh, this is the Anglo-Saxon way of doing it. The French, of course, have a different way and they do it in a weakly uh, uh, increasing order. But we follow the Anglo-Saxon practice. So um, a tableau, a young tableau, is then just an arrangement of, of K boxes uh, into a left aligned row. The partition bytes here. And we say that a standard young tableau is obtained if you place the integers one through N in these boxes in such a way that uh, the rows and the columns are both uh, uh, strictly increasing from left to right and from top to bottom, from top to bottom. So here in the example, suppose that we partition the, the integer nine into uh, four parts, three, three, two, one. So then we have the empty diagram here on the left and we can fill it, for example, in the way indicated here. So one, two, eight, first row is uh, strictly increasing. One, three, four, five, first column is uh, strictly increasing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's the young tableau. Now, with a, with a young tableau, you can associate a word. That's the, going to be the connection with the three, three uh, letter type languages or the K letter type languages for that uh, matter. Um, the word that you of, uh, of maybe show it immediately um, is going to again be a word over uh, integers, uh, as many integers as that there are as there are parts of the. Uh, 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 of the partitioning of the, uh, of the uh, uh, integer that you are dealing with. And what, you are, what they are telling, what the word is telling you is actually, so you have the first row here, and now it says that the, the first position of our word comes from the first row, the second position from the first row, and the, where is number, uh, uh, 
number three. Yeah, so the, the three here means that you have the second row, the first element of the second row. Okay. Do we get it? Now, in formal linguistics, rather than using integers to say which of the rows, we will use A, B, C, etc., etc. So we will use our letter alpha. Now, go back to the to the dike words. So for the uh, the, the d-dimensional dike words, we will be dealing not with uh, tableaus in general, but with rectangular tableaus where the fact that we are rectangular uh, and captures the uh, uh, equal letter multiplicity. There is as many uh, elements in each, of the, uh, each of the rows. And the increasing nature of the columns, the uh, strictly increasing nature of the columns uh, captures the uh, prefix uh, condition of these uh, dichroids. So that there have to be at least as many A's as that there are B's, as that there are C's in every prefix of a word that belongs to the language. Now we go to the numbers, you know, remember our uh, 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 display on the second slide. Well, for young tableaus, you have formula, saving soup length formula. But if we have rectangular diagrams, that is actually much, much uh, uh, simplified uh, to the, uh, the formula I'm giving here. Uh, so, for example, if you want to, uh, to compute uh, the number of elements in, in uh, uh, the three letter dike language with letter multiplicity two, you take a factorial of six, and yeah, then you take the, uh, uh, you divide by one times two, two times three, three times four, so you get five. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the, the numerology of the whole thing. Now we are going to try to move closer to the logical perspective on uh, on these, uh, on these uh, things. So there was a recent paper actually by Nicolas uh, rectangular young tablets. And what he calls a single input, single output, product, co-product, pro-graphs, with n product and hence also n co-product co nodes. So I'm a linguist, I don't know whether this notion of a pro-graph is is uh, something which, which uh, you guys are familiar with, but for me, this was just an interesting new perspective on the, uh, on the DAG languages. So for the co-product co nodes, we have a sing single input and two outputs. For the product nodes, we have um, two inputs and a single output. You can click these, uh, 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 these together. That is an example on the next slide. And then the correspondence with, uh, with the DAG words, is to go via a depth left first traversal of the graph that you obtain, uh, the program that you obtain, with the condition that the output f to incoming edges have already been visible. And then the inputs of the co-products are giving you the entries of the top row of the tableau. The left inputs of the products will be the entries of the middle row, and the right inputs the, uh, the bottom. We look for an example. So here's a nice picture. The word that we uh, read off this uh, uh, this graph, this program, would be A A B B A C B C C. I've indicated. I hope that you can see it. The order of the uh, depth first, left first, the traversal. So we enter here and we read an A, or an element of the first row. We go uh, depth first, left first, so we come here. This is again an input of a co-product node, so the second A. Now we go here and we have an incoming edge for the... Which is going to be... We cannot exit here to continue the depth first reversal because we haven't uh, found the second incoming edge for the product node. So we backtrack and we continue here. This is another B. This is another A, this is now first C coming in, another B, another C coming in, and the final C coming in. So that's our traversal of a, of a body uh, program, corresponding to the, to a, 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 
three by three uh, rectangular tableau. And via the Yamanuchi a word of that tableau to a word of our of our three letter dag language. Yeah. If you want to look at more pictures, by the way, so I have a, I have a, a Python notebook here, which is upload a couple of, of uh, uh, samples if you want to uh, to see more of these. Uh, okay. Now, now the Tamari order is the subject of the talk. So the Tamari order, actually, for uh, for the two-dimensional case would be a partial ordering on words that is induced by a, a semi-associative product operation. So rather, rather than having an associativity uh, uh, isomorphism, there is an order here that says that you can re-bracket, if you wish, a left-bracketed uh, product structure into a right-bracketed product structure, but you cannot do it the other way around. Okay, so that's the basis of this uh, of this Tamari order for the two letter two letter alphabets. And now my claim is that that for the three letter alphabets, so for our three dimensional dike languages, we can extend the Tamari order, considering not semi associative but three semi associative operations. One will be the uh, 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 product semi associativity. Remember that these programs are built in terms of product and co-product nodes that are clicked together. So there's the product semi-associativity on the one hand, and then by duality, there's going to be a co-product semi-associativity. It's one way, it's not going, just the arrow goes one way, it's not a, a two-way arrow here. Then finally, there is going to be a mixed semi-associativity for the cases where the product and the co-product come in construction with each other. So if we have our uh, co-product, which, uh, sorry, our product, which immediately leads into a co-product node, uh, the semi-associativity here says that we can, if you wish, push up the, uh, um, uh, the product node over the co And maybe some of you will say, huh, this, this looks very much like directed versions, so one-way versions of what would be the uh, uh, equations of a Frobenius algebra, all right? Which would, by definition, have full associativity, both of the product and of the co-product, um, and um, uh, which would have not just this uh, semi-associativity for, uh, for the mixed case, but would have the full, uh, uh, the full uh, uh, mixed associativity. So let's see how this, uh, how this uh, 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 works out. So here on this slide, I uh, repeat my uh, earlier example of a, uh, of a Bori uh, program. Uh, and you see that there is uh, two opportunities of actually of applying these, uh, these uh, rewritings under uh, the co-product uh, uh, rebracketing. So the right branching structure here is turned into a left branching structure for the co-product. But at the same time, you could have uh, a pattern matched on the product uh, uh, semi-associativity in blue here, which would allow you to turn the left branching product structure into a right branching product structure, right? So the, uh, the program on the left, uh, matches both the uh, uh, the co-product uh, uh, semi-associativity and the product semi-associativity. Okay, good. So now let's look at the simplest case of 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 the order. So I take here uh, letter multiplicity two for our three-letter dike languages, and the idea would be that the bottom of the uh, uh, the minimum element of the of the lattice, the Tamari lattice, that uh, uh, results would be the regular word abc to the power n so here abc to the power two and the uh, top of the uh, uh, of the lattice would be uh, a to the n b to the n c to the, the example that i discussed uh, right at the beginning of my talk so how does this uh, this uh, uh, lattice uh, uh, arise with our three uh, semi associativities if you look at uh, uh, the minimal element here ABC to the power two, 
it matches the, uh, the mixed uh, uh, semi-associativity. We have a product node coming in construction with co-product node. And by applying that uh, rewriting rule, we get, uh, we get uh, the words uh, A, B, A, C, B, C. Now this word, I says, oops, uh, is something happening for you or just for me? Oh, no. Is everything fine for you or not? It, it shrunk. It shrunk? Oh my god, how can I un unshrink it? This is Alice in Wonderland, I'm afraid. Oh. Are we back there? Uh, yeah, it now it back, looks good. Back. Yeah, it's back to normal. Okay. okay. So now we have uh, A, B, A, C, B, C, this point here. And we can, just as in the previous example, actually, we can either apply the, uh, 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 the uh, product associative, semi associativity, or the co product semi associativity, leading to A, B, A, B, C, C, or A, A, B, C, B, C. And then if we started with uh, uh, the product associativity, we can follow with the co product associativity, and vice versa for starting with the co product uh, semi associativity followed by the product. Uh, so to understand a little bit better what the combinatorics here is, it's good to think about the, the duality in these uh, programs and on the words. Schützenberg uh, uh, is uh, uh, involution, which on the graphs is just uh, taking the 100 degree uh, rotation. And on the words, it's uh, reading the word backwards with the, uh, with the inverse uh, algorithm. So then what you see is that on the horizontal line here, the words that we have are self-dual. So let's try for this guy here on the word level, for example, we read the word backwards and we replace the C by an A, the B stays what it was and the A is replaced by a C. So read backwards, you get the same word back. So on the horizontal line, we have self-dual elements and here uh, vertically, these are uh, uh, duals, but not uh, not uh, self. Another thing to remark here is that, of course, the, the minimal uh, element of our lattice is regular, so it's just in general it's uh, A B C to the power n. Uh, the maximal element is uh, beyond context free. It's uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, two dimensional, multiple context free namely uh, a to the power n, b to the power n, c to the power n. And uh, the other elements in the middle here, sorry, they, th these guys here are uh, context three, right? So this is a b to the power n followed by c to the power n or a to the power n followed by b c to the power n. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how this lattice now originates not from one semi-associativity, but for the natural three semi-associativities that you get when you start from these mixed uh, product, co-product uh, graphs. Here is an even nicer picture. Uh, the lattice for uh, uh, multiplicity, electron multiplicity three, which uh, has uh, 42 elements. Again, we start from uh, ABC to the power three here, and we go to A and B and C and for N is three. The vertical axis here is uh, the cell of uh, uh, dual elements. And if you mirror along the, along the vertical axis, you have the dual, uh, the dual elements uh, at the two sides of the, the vertical, uh, vertical divide. So it's really nice uh, combinatorics in this whole thing. The next thing is that- Could, could I just ask a question? Yes, sorry, sorry. Of course. So, so do the, do the um, does the ordering have a, have a simple description on the words themselves rather than on the photographs? Uh, it, it has, but this is, this is pretty elusive actually. Um, mm -hmm. So there okay. is this book on combinatorics by, by Willef and, and uh, Nieuwenhuis, this famous book from the 70s or mm -hmm. something, combinatoric algorithms. And actually they have a way of enumerating uh, the words of these languages hmm. uh, 
in such a way that well but it's not no it's not really going to give you what you're asking for because of course there's not just going to be a linear order which is what you get from the uh, from the wheel of uh, algorithm but here there's a point of there's points of reentrancy that there's like as we saw in the simple example ways of getting to this point actually from two uh, starting positions there. Okay. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to answer that question whether there is whether you, it must be possible to directly formulate it on the word. Mm. But, uh, okay, but so I, was I, this was this generated by how, how did you generate this? Okay, so to generate these lattices is by simple uh, uh, breadth first uh, uh, unfolding of the uh, of the space, of the search space. So you start with uh, with a minimum element uh, A B C to the power n, then you apply any of the possible. Uh, ways of generating children from that uh, uh, from that node using the three uh, semi-associative and associating taking a word associating to it the corresponding uh, prograph then applying yeah. any possible yeah. rule and then yeah. associating exactly back. Yeah. right yeah. see so it's just standard breadth first unfolding of the of the space uh, which uh, for each point for each node asks the question what are the children of that node and then you so you generate you have generations generations right the zero generation first generation second generation etc cetera, etc cetera, going up to okay. the uh, okay yeah so that's how you generate that then mm, the tamari order for the for the two letter case is actually hidden it's a subgraph of our of our uh, uh, three letter case which you which you obtain by just restricting to words that have all the c's at the end for example or by duality that would have all the A's at the, at the beginning. So here is the 14 element lattice of uh, 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 multiplicity for, for the, uh, uh, say for the well-balanced bracket language, if you just forget about the C's that are bungling at the end, right? So it's hidden in this, in this larger graph. Uh, then the, the next, the next thing that I've learned all these things from, from Noam's uh, papers on, on Samari intervals and, and, and uh, Lambic grammars actually. So the idea of the Tamari interval is to to take the sets that uh, well the sets uh, the sets of formulas A V here such that there is a C between these uh, lower and, and higher points. There is a formula by Chapoton which counts them uh, for the two uh, for the two letter case. And there is also a nice number in the uh, online encyclopedia here uh, telling you uh, what kind of uh, animals that you find uh, obeying that formula. Now, <laughs> the embarrassing thing here is that when, when we start counting the intervals for the three letter case, I have a nice sequence here. My computer, after a night of uh, working, uh, stopped at uh, this number here. But the sequence is not in the online encyclopedia. So uh, this is an opportunity to either upload it or to think you know, there must be something really wrong about this whole idea. Okay, so, but it could be, of course, that, that because the, the Chapoton formula is for, for this route to try and reconnect the, this pair that by looking a bit closer, it would be possible to also for the three letter case to find the, generating function for the for the sequence i don't know it's again open so now my time is almost up or maybe it is up i don't know which in a sense is good because here i come to my my own open open problem session so the thing that i found very intriguing in noam's paper is that he was able to actually generate the two letters of my order uh, or to characterize it in terms of derivability between formulas A and B in a version of Lambic's uh, uh, 58 syntactic calculus that rather than having full associativity, which is what this uh, system has, uh, has a restricted form of associativity. So Noam actually starts from the associative uh, uh, Lambic calculus and restricts it by having a, a version of the, uh, the product left rule that only works on the first formula of the sequence, right? So the challenge that I gave to my students and that I couldn't solve myself is actually, if you want to generalize this approach, 
so characterizing these Tamari uh, orders in terms of logical derivability. We cannot do it with Lambex calculus because it's of course well known that Lambex uh, system, both the uh, associative and the non-associative one, uh, that they are strictly context-free in their recognizing power. So we have to move beyond uh, uh, simple Lambex systems. And it so happens that what I've been working on the last 10 years is actually an extension of uh, these Lambic systems, which was proposed by, uh, uh, by Grishin in the 80s, 83, a so called Lambic uh, Grishin calculus, which you can, uh, 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 as Lambic has it with his own calculus, extend with either associativities or semi associativities or all that. So the reference here, if uh, you want to, to know more about the systems, would be a paper that I wrote with uh, Richard Mode, uh, where we give a display a sequence calculus for these lambda Christian system, systems, uh, uh, where we prove focusing uh, focusing property for that uh, sequence calculus. We also have a proof net, a graphical calculus, and a connection with uh, uh, with uh, uh, fragments of uh, linear lambda calculus going with it. So that's that's the, the wider picture of this of this whole thing. But just to give you an idea of what this lambic Grishin calculus is all about, so Lambic, uh, actually the non-associative, so the, the, the most the basic Lambic calculus starts from uh, uh, pure residuation logic for uh, a multiplication, a product, and its two residuals, the right slash and the left slash, uh, expressing incompletely. And what Grishin did is he actually complemented Lambic's language with a uh, co-product, uh, together with uh, left and right difference uh, residuals, difference on products. So the relation between the original uh, lambic product and its uh, uh, implications, its uh, slashes, and the uh, co-product and the difference operations is, is actually arrow reversal. So the, there is an arrow reversal duality that relates all the lambic uh, uh, theorems to, uh, if you wish, the co-lambic theorems, which uh, obtain for, for uh, sum and, and difference operations. So that's a base, it's a non-associative basis with a product family and a co-product family. And then one, one can extend that uh, uh, a pure residuation, residuation and co-residuation basis with uh, structural uh, postulates. So for uh, the problem at hand, this would be uh, uh, semi-associativities uh, of the same type. So either uh, a product semi-associativity or co-product semi-associativity. Related, related by duality as we have it in the in the Fourier graphs. And then the interesting case here is that there is also mixed semi-associativities, which in the linear logic uh, literature uh, are known as linear distributivity. And they come in, in Grishin's terminology in different flavors. They are either the class one or the class four postulate. Uh, the class one postulates are probably what's most familiar to, to, to you people would be that you have a co-product which is dominated by a product, so which is under a product uh, operation. And then the class one semi-associativity allows the co-product to actually win it over the product. It moves up. But in class four, the class four case, it's just uh, things are just going the opposite, the opposite way. And I've been, I haven't been able to actually figure out which of the semi-associativities would be, would be applicable to what we, uh, what we want to do uh, with the Tamari uh, uh, the Tamari order. So currently what I'm trying to do is, first of all, of course, find an encoding of a, of a three-letter Dijk word as a lambic Grishin formula, which is what, what uh, the Zeilberg paper does for, you know, for the, the, the two-letter uh, Tamari order. Then capture the, uh, uh, the inequality of the Tamari order in terms of uh, lambic Grishin derivability. And the intuition here would be that if we have same type associativities, sorry, if we have pure uh, either product or co-product subformulas, they are uh, subject to the same type associativity. Uh, if we have mixed formulas, we would uh, restrict to mixed formulas with equal numbers of products and co-product operations, as in the Borey graphs, actually. And the linear distributivities would allow you to actually disentangle such a mixed formula so that all the product operations and all the co-product operations come together where the, uh, uh, the, uh, the same type of associativities would be applicable, as we had it more or less in our uh, initial example here of the simplest, uh, the simplest uh, uh, lattice for the, for the multiplicity to, uh, 
multiplicity to k. So that's where I got, and uh, that's where the open problem session starts, and where I hope to learn more from you in this uh, in this day, and listening to the uh, listening to the other. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We're actually running a bit late on time because the, yeah. the next talk starts in five minutes, but um, if, if we have time for a question or two. I mean, so of course, I'm very interested in the problem that you pose at, at the end. Um, <clears throat> And the relation to Lambert Grishin calculus, but it's it's not it's not clear how to go about it. I mean, one so the relation between the product, the I mean the it's not. So the relation between the co-product, how, how, to, how to go from these co-product, product co-product graphs to formulas is not clear to me. Exactly, it's not um, clear to me either, right? So it, 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 the ingredients, so to speak, that we have in lambert grishin calculus are the same. So there will be a product operation and a co-product operation. Mm -hmm. um, and either of them can be subject to not associativity as you have it in the, in the full system, but semi-associativity is fine. Uh, now there's also formulas that mix actually the the yeah. product and the co-product operations yeah. and for this we have the linear distributivities to actually disentangle as soon as they are disentangled then the, the, the usual you know semi-associativities for the same type of so formulas are going to be applicable for example uh, uh, what you did for the, uh, the two-letter uh, tamari order in terms of lambic derivability for a semi-associative lambic calculus is already here because uh, that would be uh, formulas that are entirely built up out of product operations. There's no co-product co operations around. So that means that the only operation that is applicable there is actually the, uh, the same type semi-associativity for the product. So it's already there. Two letter case is already there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the intuition, intuition would be that if, if it's a, a mixed formula with products and co-products, that there would actually be a way of uh, reading such a formula as an encoding of a word, right? Yeah. As you have it in the Borie graphs that you say, well, it, you look at these objects that is at these types yeah. of graphs, but then you actually read off the word that establishes the isomorphism with, uh, with the rectangular diagram blocks by means of this depth first, left first, the traversal uh, construction. Right? So you could imagine that there is a similar way of actually going through a formula uh, built out of these product and co-product operations that will spell out the word actually. Okay, let me just point out in the chat, we have a comment from Orestes Milconian in case okay. anyone is feeling adventurous and wants to explore Dick languages, feel free to use our tools to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, I think we should we should stop there because the next talk is starting in just a couple of minutes. But okay. thank you, thank you very much again. Okay. <laughs>